Hey, how are we Rev Youth? This is parable number 20. So today we're gonna to be looking at a new parable as we transition out of the parables that we have been in for a few weeks in Matthew chapter 13, where Jesus was speaking on and teaching on the kingdom of heaven. And so today we're gonna to be looking at the parable of the lost sheep. And we find this parable in both the gospel of Matthew and the gospel of Luke. So we're gonna read it from both accounts and then we'll talk about the significance of it in a second. So in Matthew, we find it in chapter 18 and it starts in verse 10 and Jesus shares this. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go and search for the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So... It is not the will of my Father, who is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. And then in Luke, we find it in chapter 15, picking up in verse 4, Jesus shares this. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that he has lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. The reason I wanted to read from both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke is I believe the two of them put together paint this perfect picture of what it is that Jesus is trying to communicate to us through this parable. Now remember, parables are earthly stories with heavenly implications, spiritual implications. And what Jesus is trying to communicate here, as we've transitioned out of talking about the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about Jesus going after people who are lost so that they can put their faith in him, that they can come home, have a restored relationship with the Father, and then enter that kingdom of heaven that he has just spent time talking about. And so we see this picture of a lost sheep. Now, there's there's really kind of two people that would be watching this video right now, be watching this message. There would be someone who was once lost and then heard the good news of Jesus and then was rescued by the shepherd and brought home to the flock. Or there's the, the person who would be watching this who is still lost. And you may not even know you're lost until you've heard the gospel, until you've heard the, the saving grace that comes in salvation through Jesus because of his finished work on the cross and his resurrection. And so as we hear this, the first thing that happens is we are forced to wrestle with who am I in this story? Am I one of the, the 99 or am I uh, the, the lost sheep? Now, Jesus is described in the Bible as being the good shepherd. Now, there's bad shepherds who don't take care of their flock and they lead them astray. And we see this uh, in, in people in the culture that will follow, uh, who, who lead people down paths that they never really wanted to go down or they didn't see the implications of following that path. Uh, but Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the one who would leave all of the 99, who would leave the, the masses to go after the one. Now, this is, this is one of the most encouraging things that we could ever hear, that God sent his son to go after the lost. Jesus goes after the lost. And so what, what we should really be taking away from this is that when we drift, because naturally we drift away from God, like a sheep, we get distracted, we go the wrong way, and we can get lost. When we get lost, Jesus is the one that we have to turn to. And, and what I love that Luke shares is that when the shepherd finds the sheep, he will put him over his shoulder. You know, sometimes when you come to this place of you realize that you were lost without Jesus, it hurts you. It, 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 you realize your brokenness. You realize that you really can't figure it all out by yourself. And, and that's a, a tough place to be. Our, our pride gets hit. Um, but there, there was this practice, and there still is a practice with shepherds, where when a, a sheep would go astray, because they tend to go astray, 
that practice of picking the sheep up and putting them on their shoulders, they would actually break their legs so that the sheep couldn't run off. And then they would carry the sheep back to the herd, back to the flock, back to safety, and then begin the healing process. And this is what salvation looks like. We are lost without Jesus. We're lost without God. We were created to have a relationship with him. And when we don't, we are astray, lost in the world, following shepherds that we shouldn't, or we're just wandering without a shepherd. But when we hear the good news, when we hear the gospel, when we know that God sent his son to die on a cross for our sins so that we could be reunited with him, that's when Jesus is picking us up, even though it may hurt to realize that we've been going the wrong way and that we, we are broken and that we're missing something. Although it may hurt, he picks us up, puts us on his shoulder and carries us home. And that is where the healing process begins. And so my encouragement for you today, my challenge for you today is this. If you haven't put your faith in Jesus yet, and, and you are a, a sheep who is without a shepherd, lost in the world, I would, I would challenge you to spend some time reading these parables and, and find the truth that Jesus is communicating to your heart, that yes, you're lost, you may be hurting, you may be broken, but he wants to save you. He wants to find you. You just have to look for him. And if you've put your faith in Jesus, my encouragement for you would be to be praying for the ones who are lost. Because oftentimes when you're lost, you don't even know you're lost. When you've gone astray, you don't even realize that you've drifted from the course that you were supposed to be on. So be praying for those ones who are lost, that they would find the good shepherd, they would find Jesus, and they would find their healing. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you for the parables that we get to lean into. God, I thank you for the truth that you reveal to us through them. I thank you for Jesus, who's the good shepherd, who's our healer, who's our protector. God, who brings us back into a relationship with you, that we no longer have to, to wander this world uh, being led the wrong way or, or even just leading ourselves the wrong way, God, that we could be brought back into the relationship that we were always created to have, the relationship with you, back into the flock, back into the herd. And God, we thank you for the healing that comes when we put our faith in you, as you begin to renew our hearts and our minds and, and you fix the broken pieces. God, we thank you for that healing. And God, we just pray that there would be salvation through your word, through Jesus. In his name we pray.